click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to the subject of Machine Design 1. Students, we are right now in the module number 3 where we are learning design of the components against static loads. In last lecture, we went through the static loads, what are the effects and how to consider them for the design. In today's lecture, we are going to look at the one of the kind of um, element which is experiencing static load. So the first element we are going to consider is quarter joint. Quarter joint is a kind of joint which is used to join different shafts. Now, what is the application of quarter joint that is very important for our understanding? Students, you must be knowing that when there is power transmission to be done, there is one end where the motor is attached. This motor provides the power. Now most of the motors give us the rotational effect, right? So it's the rotational power that they give. So in such shafts, when rotational power is given, we need to deliver this power to the other end. This other end can be a machine, it can be just an ending of the machine which we need to rotate. For example, a fan. The winding of the fan is the motor and the actual fan blades or the disc of the fan that we need to rotate is a machine. So if you see properly that this shaft or this shaft member of motor we need to connect with the shaft member of your machine. So this is your machine end and this is your motor end. So when I need to combine them and why do I need to combine them? Guys, when it's a small machine, you can directly incorporate motor shaft with the machine shaft. It's very easy. But in certain applications where distances are very large between them, you need to combine them with proper connectors. So those connectors have to be designed very properly. So I'll call them connectors. Or in other way, we'll call them joints. Now these connectors actually take the load from the motor or take the power from the motor and they deliver it to the shaft of the machine. And hence the design of connector and joints are very important. Such a kind of connectors we are going to learn in this topic. The very first connector that we are going to look at is quarter joint. Second kind of connector that we are going to look at is knuckle joint. Right. So let us start with the quarter joint design aspect. Before that, let us learn what is a quarter joint and why it is called quarter joint. What are the types and what are the types we are going to consider. Before we start the actual design procedure, let us solve a very simple problem where it will give you the idea of how to solve the problems of parts which are facing static loads. That is designed against static loads. So very first problem that we are considering here is this there are two plates given and those two plates are riveted together you must have seen the rivets right so these are the two plates i have shown the cross section and they are held together they are held together by means of rivets rivet is such a kind of structure which has a cylindrical body and it has the cylindrical top and they are used to connect the bodies. Now, on this particular plates, there are three rivets used. So we can draw their top view like this. This is the upper plate and this is the lower plate with some infinite length or finite length. This is where the bottom plate is over. These two plates are held together by means of three rivets and that is how the location of rivets is given. Now we are least bother right now about what is their distance in between and what is their material. As of now, we are only concerned with the plates and their dimensions, right? So what is mentioned here? The plates are experiencing 50 kilonewton loads. They are trying to take them apart. So this plate is also being dragged and this plate is also being dragged by 50 kilonewton force in mutually opposite directions. Now, when this happens, we know that the 
direct stress that is acting on this on the plate is definitely the 50 divided by the area of cross section of this plate but if you see properly this particular loads will try to take the body of pins apart from each other and this kind of failure will be called shear failure in that case right so basically this particular machine or this particular assembly we will call it assembly is experiencing two kind of stresses one stress which is direct because it is acting perpendicular to the area of cross section another stress is shear stress because it is acting tangential to the area of cross section of only pin so the rivets which has pin as the body and head as the upper body so rivet is made up of pin the body of pin and the head right? so the rivet is experiencing shear stress and the plates are experiencing the direct stresses so in short we need to design them for direct stress and shear stresses let us move ahead what is the data given they have specified the material it is a plain carbon steel 10 c4 grade doesn't matter as of now because we have been given their material properties also guys now this is the task of a design engineer that he has to find out the material properties of the given product or given part there are different ways which we will be learning here after but right now let us just consider the given property they have also specified the material property the yield stress or yield strength of the material guys one more point you need to understand that strength and stress are the same thing or the stresses are actually representing the strength of the material and hence the yield strength of the given material which is pcs plain carbon steel 10 c4 grade is 250 newton per mm square also the factor of safety that we need to maintain is 2.5 now this factor of safety is valid for both the plates as well as the rivets what they want us to find out is we need to find out the diameter of rivets that means the body of rivet that means it's a pin and the thickness of the plates that we need to find out so with these two parameters let us start solving this problem quickly let us start with the first that is the rivet diameter guys if i try to draw the part of rivet which is going to fail it looks like this this is how the rivet is placed and this part of rivet is being dragged in this direction and this part of the rivet is being dragged in this direction by plates if you refer to the original diagram the upper part is being dragged on the right side and the lower part is being dragged on left side so this is how the dragging is taking place so in short if this pin fails it will fail in this manner this part will be taken on this side and this part will be taken on this side we know that both the forces acting are same that is 50 kilonewton so basically this is the region where the failure is taking place we know that this failure is kind of shear failure because the force is acting tangential to the area and hence there will be shear stress so for pin or basically rivet the failure criteria is shear stress let us experience it using or let us express it using tau as the letter now we know that the tau which is safe for this pin will be given by tau which is allowed divided by factor of safety that is what the definition of factor of safety is factor of safety actually is given by allowable value divided by the actual value so in short the working shear stress or the stress that we are going to actually experience this particular rivet is going to experience will be given by the allowable value of stress divided by factor of safety but do we really have the allowable value of shear stress no in the given data they have not specified but what they have specified is the yield strength of the material which is 250 newton per mm square now the material which is specified is plain carbon steel it's a steel which is a kind of ductile material and we know that for ductile materials shear stress has a relation it is 0.5 times the 
yield strength. So in our case, shear strength, which is allowable, is equal to half the allowable yield strength. So it has to be equal to 0 0.5 times 250. That makes it 125 Newton per mm square. So this is an important finding. Let's move ahead. After this, we will use this formula where the working shear stress or the shear stress that we may allow will be equal to allowable value of tau that is 125 divided by factor of safety. They have given us the factor of safety as 2.5. So we'll use this factor of safety 2.5 and therefore tau working will come out to be, we'll calculate this, it comes out to be 50. So it's 50 Newton per mm square is the working stress, shear stress, or in other language is the actual shear stress that is going to act on the body. Therefore, what we know is shear stress is given by, in terms of load, is given by force divided by area of cross section. But this is tangential area of cross section, which it is going to experience. What also we know is that there are total three rivets, right? So there are three areas of cross section that are experiencing the failure. So in this case, it becomes the load divided by three areas of cross section of pins. We know that area of cross section of pin is given by pi by 4 d raised to 4 d square, sorry pi by 4 d raised to 2. So this value I have to substitute here and therefore the actual formula for tau comes out to be your force which is tangential of course divided by 3 times pi by 4 d raised to 2. So in this manner it becomes tau is equal to 4 times f divided by 3 pi times d raised to 2. But somehow we know that tau working or tau, uh, tau working is going to be 50 Newton per mm square. And therefore, 50 is equal to 4 times the load. We know that the load acting on these objects are 50 kilo Newton. So it has to be 50 into 10 raised to 3 Newton divided by 3 times pi which has no unit as such the diameter square will be in terms of millimeter square newton per millimeter square newton per millimeter square units are matched that's why we are correct or we are on the correct track of which if i reshuffle i have only one unknown with me that makes it d square is equal to 4 into 50 into 10 raised to 3 divided by 3 pi into 50 and therefore d comes out to be let's calculate this value if you look at the expression we'll get value of d square is 424.413 if we take square root of this answer we are going to get value of d is 20.602 mm People, we know that it's a standard part. The rivet is going to be the standard part. Standard parts, we prefer to have the preferred series dimensions. And hence, to manufacture it with this particular stuff, we will go for the preferred size, which can be manipulated to 22 millimeter. So the next size we are going to consider for this particular rivet, right? And that's why, and that's why, the actual dimension of rivet, diameter of rivet we are going to get is 22 millimeter. And hence, your first answer comes out here, that is the diameter of rivet should be 22 millimeter so as to sustain the given conditions. So that was the first part. Let us go for the second part where we need to find out the thickness of the plate. Let us say this is just the segment of the plates, one of the plates on which force is acting 
of 50 kilo newton this is the width and this is the thickness which we are going to consider for this plate let us consider that there is a unique length a unique breadth of the plate so let us consider it to be one millimeter or any other standard unit you can consider for its width so for this kind of width what should be the thickness that we are going to find out we know that the stress induced in this is equal to again force upon area of cross section on which it is acting so basically it is going to be 50 into 10 raised to 3 divided by area this cross section area becomes 1 into thickness t somehow the value that they have given is yield strength which is 250 newton per millimeter square they also specified the factor of safety we know that factor of safety is the ratio of the allowable value divided by working we are most concerned about the working value and hence working stress will be given by sigma y divided by factor of safety so that makes it 250 divided by 2.5 and hence your working stress comes out to be 100 newton per mm square this is the actual working stress that the plate is going to experience and therefore we are substituting this value back in equation this and therefore sigma working is 100 which is equal to force which is 15 to 10 raised to 3 divided by 1 we have considered the width of the plate as 1 mm if it was given we would have taken that width but in our case we have considered 1 mm you can consider it 100 mm just specify that you have considered the width as 100 mm so in that case 1 into thickness t and therefore i can find out thickness t is equal to 500 mm so to given to sustain the given condition the thickness of the plate should be 500 mm now in this particular question the answer is subjective because the width that we are going to consider is different so we'll say that let width is equal to 1 mm if you consider this width as 100 mm the answer is definitely going to change so this is the answer of the first sample question where i have demonstrated how to solve a design problem for different parameters so we in the beginning decided which are the kind of stresses which are going to act on the body then we figured out their values and then depending upon those values we figured out the required dimensions of diameter of the rivet and the thickness of the plate thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ikira thank you